Well, we have a guest this morning. You all know him. Some of you have known him all, all his life. <laughs> Jonathan, will you come? Let's welcome him. Amen. Okay, I'll just have to use this then. Um, so, uh, Merry Christmas, everyone. We've only got a short time till Christmas. Uh, so, I've entitled this message, uh, Where is the Lord? How many have ever wondered at a time in your life, uh, where is God? When I ask this question, am I really interested in knowing the answer? Am I really ready to pursue the question and find the truth? It is my desire to know him, but but is it ever the 100% commitment necessary to find him? I really want to question my heart's motives and to find God, and in doing so, challenge myself to really find him. God said, in Jeremiah 29:13 Then you will seek me This is the amplified it says inquire for and require me as a vital necessity and find me when you search for me with all your heart The vital necessity that's more than food and water because if our physical body dies what does it matter if we don't get to spend eternity with God. So Jesus is the most vital necessity of our lives. He is my love that I must search for in my heart every day. If I yearn for him and he doesn't come, I'm going to go out and find him. The story of Christmas the history of Christmas is a searching and a longing. Uh, some have said that the night, uh, December 25th, is actually the night that the wise men came to seek Jesus, or the wise men came to Jesus. Uh, we're not really sure if, if that's if that's really the date, but that's what some have suggested based on the stars and where the star, where the likely star, because uh, some believe that the star was actually Jupiter, uh, and they believe that around that time it would have been over Bethlehem, so that's why they think it was probably December 25th when um, the wise men came to see Jesus since they were following the star. One of the questions they asked in Matthew 2 was, where is our Lord, or where is the Lord? Or where is he to be born? Where is the king of the Jews? Where is he to be born? The question is, where is Jesus? Where is the Savior? This is from Song of Solomon th uh, 3. I use the New Living Translation says, one night as I lie in bed, I yearned for my lover. I yearned for him, but he did not come. So I said to myself, I will get up and roam the city, searching in all of its streets and squares. I will search for the one I love. So I searched every, everywhere, but I did not find him. The watchmen stopped me as they made their rounds, and I asked, have you seen the one I love? Then scarcely had I left them when I found my love. I caught and held him tightly. Then I brought him to my mother's house, into my mother's bed where I had been conceived. Again, where is Jesus? Where do I go that I may find him? So 
So again, Matthew 2, 2, it says, Where is the newborn king of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the far off eastern lands and have come to worship him. You know, it's likely that these people came from Babylon. We're not exactly sure. We know that they came from the east. Uh, Babylon is east of Israel, so it's likely that they came from Babylon. They were likely um, Jewish people from, because why would they come worship the king of the Jews? Um it's likely that there were Jewish people, uh, probably from the diaspora, some of the people like Daniel that were taken to Babylon. Uh, they probably read a lot of Daniel's prophecies because uh, Daniel gave them around the time that the newborn king would would be born. And these guys uh, watched the stars. And so they probably saw some signs in the heaven of a king being born. And they said, let's go find out where this king is to be born. When they got there, they asked the scribes where he was to be born. They quoted from Micah that he would be born, or is it Malachi? Um, <laughs> but they they quoted uh, the prophet that said uh, he was to be born in Bethlehem. And um, in in this lesson, I I want to seek Jesus. I want to find Jesus. And in doing so, I want to lead others to Jesus. I'm not content of keeping them all to myself. So if you will, just go with me on this journey. And uh, I just want to take some time right now to just pray. Lord Jesus, I just pray that you help us find you. I pray, Lord, that You'll speak what needs to be said today, Lord, that you would speak through me, Lord God. That your Holy Spirit would come, Lord. That we'd experience you, Jesus. Lord, we, we want a touch from you, Lord, and we really are desperate to find you, God. Thank you, Lord. At any moment, I may just uh, pause the sermon just so we can find him. So just to let you know. He's more important than what I have to say. And if he wants to interrupt us, I'm giving him permission now. Jesus, this is your sermon today. Please speak to us. We want to hear from you. So where is my king? My mind needs to focus on the Spirit. You know, we have a physical mind. The Bible talks about that in Romans 8. And we also have a spiritual mind when we've been born again. And I've got to commit both to the Spirit. My mind must be committed to the Spirit I must melt my stone hard heart before the Lord and lay down my carnal mind. I really have to put myself to death. Again, as it says in Romans 8, when we die, we're no longer subject to the law because a dead man isn't subject to the law. My mind desires to be filled with carnality, with the lust of the eyes, with the passions of this world, with the food and welfare of the Pharisees as well as the diseases and sensuality the diseases of sensuality and war our world is full of revenge and selfishness the carnal things are full of war and vengeance you can see that in just about any movie made in the past 30 years pretty much there's Stories of revenge and vengeance and just about everything, especially action movies, uh, <laughs> you see a lot of that. 
And God said, vengeance is mine. You know, I think so many times we, we like to cheer for that person getting their vengeance in those movies, but how many times do we stop and think, you know, isn't vengeance belong to the Lord? And our carnal minds love vengeance. It is also partially the image of God that we want justice, but we've perverted that into something that wants destruction, something that wants pain and suffering almost. And that's not of the Spirit of God. Our world is full of vengeance, revenge, and selfishness. The carnal things are full of war and vengeance, I said, uh, full of sensuality and perversion. You can see that in just about any movie made nowadays, except maybe some good Christian movies that are being made now, thank God. <laughs> but, you know, we, I grieve the Spirit when I make my efforts towards the carnal seductions of the flesh. When my mind is stayed on the things of this world, the carnal things of this world, I'm grieving the Holy Spirit. It's quenching the Spirit in my heart. This is where we need to induce love, where I need to induce love. I just think about the words induction and seduction. Induction means leads to, seduction means leads away. If I'm leading my heart to God, I'm inducing my mind to the Spirit. I'm allowing the Spirit to guide me. I'm allowing myself to open myself up to God's direction. When I induce the Holy Spirit, I allow the Spirit to come in. I'm leading myself to the Spirit. But when I'm seduced, when I'm led astray by all the desires of this world, the deceitfulness of riches, the passions and the lusts that I desire more than God, when I'm seduced by that stuff, I'm led away from the Spirit. I'm led away from God. You know, it talks about in Revelations, the church that was doing all the right things, but this one thing God had against them, they left their first love. It didn't say they, lo they lost their first love. It says that they left their first love. That means that they were led astray. They were seduced in their carnal minds that they were doing all the right things, but they were doing them for the wrong reasons. We can be doing all the right things for the Lord, but have the wrong motives. God looks at our heart. He says, are you doing this because you love me or because you want to glorify yourself? Just about anything can be made pure through our motives. And just about anything can be made a sin through our motives. So Romans 8, 5 through 6, uh, or at least, yeah, we already, well, let's read, uh, sorry, Romans 8, 5. I kind of skipped that. <laughs> For those who are according to the flesh and are controlled by its unholy desires, set their minds on and pursue those things which gratify the flesh. But those who are according to the Spirit and are controlled by the desires of the Spirit, set their minds and on and seek those things which gratify the Holy Spirit. So I have to set my mind on things that gratify the Spirit. Now the mind of the flesh, which is sense and reason without the Holy Spirit, is death. Death that comprises all the miseries arising from sin, both here and hereafter. But the mind of the Holy Spirit is life and soul and peace, both now and forever. If we're walking in the Spirit of God, we're walking in the kingdom of heaven. 
you know, when we get to King, when we get to heaven, we're not going to be controlled by the desires of the flesh anymore because our flesh will have been made new. When we first get to heaven, we're not going to be controlled by our our fleshly mind anymore. But how much more now do we not make ourselves slaves to sin, but a slave to the gospel, a slave to Jesus? So many times I fail to induce my mind to love God. Instead of being led by the Spirit, I am often seduced by my flesh and its desires, and I am instead led by the flesh. Jesus, please break off all seductions that lead me away from you. What is the Spirit asking me to break off? What is he asking you to do? The Holy Spirit induces conviction, not condemnation. Conviction, the spirit of truth that draws us close to him. The enemy tries to bring condemnation on us, to seduce us, to lead us away from him. I have to break off condemnation. Romans 8.1 tells us there is no, th- therefore no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. I'm not asking for a spirit of condemnation. I'm asking for a spirit of conviction. Of the Holy Spirit's truth to work its way into my heart right now. Holy Spirit, speak. Lord, where you want to lead us in the rest of this time with you is up to you. I don't want to get in the way of your lead. The book of Acts documents demonstrations of God's power. The Bible tells us the signs and wonders. It isn't just healing the sick and healing miracles. There are some strange things that the Lord does. Speaking in tongues is one of them. But some just stop there. But you have to ask yourself, what's more strange than speaking in languages you don't understand? There's a side of God that loves to play with his children. I think David really grasped the heart of God when he danced so violently that his clothes fell off. And he said, I'll become even more undignified than this. You know, I think David danced with such a fever and such a joy in his heart that he didn't care what anyone else thought. God knows how to have a good time better than anyone. Reverencing the Holy Spirit doesn't have to do with being quiet. 
It has to do with letting him do what he wants to do. Does the Spirit know better than us? Does the Spirit want something better than we could imagine? Is his agenda more important than ours? Wise men followed a star to Jesus. Creation subjected its, itself to the Father's will. Planned long ago was Jesus' birth as a man. It was the will of the Father, a move of the Spirit, the obedience of Joseph and Mary, that brought forth the Son of God as a man. Mary was baptized in holy emotion when she sang out to the Lord her Savior. The Spirit hit Elizabeth and John. John the Baptist, when he was still in his mother's womb. When Mary came, the Spirit poured out on them. She was carrying the Savior in her womb. She was carrying the presence of Jesus with her. John leapt for joy in the womb of his aged mother when he became aware of the presence of the Savior. When Mary came and she announced herself to Elizabeth, John left for joy. The Lord needs to restore the joy of my salvation. Joy to the world, right? Restore to me again the joy of your salvation and make me willing to obey you, Father. This was a cry of David's heart. David could worship the Holy Spirit. He could worship God. He could worship him in full joy. Jesus brings us joy and it leads us to new levels of obedience. I need it restored constantly so I can walk in obedience so I can be led by the Spirit, so I can announce the coming of the King. Remember, John was a herald of the King. John the Baptist was heralding the King. He was announcing his first coming. We are here to herald the return of the King. Just as John told the people to repent, for the kingdom of heaven is near, we need to tell people, repent, Jesus is coming soon. Jesus is coming back. Let's go to him and tell others to run to him. He is the fountain of living water. He is the bread of life. He is my salvation. He is the joy of my salvation. Come unto Jesus. Give him your life today. Come to Jesus. Let him have his way. Jesus, help me to control what I watch and hear. Help me to crucify the desires of my flesh. Let me put them to death. I desire to put to death the desires of the flesh because there's nothing and no one I want more than you, Jesus. Jesus, you were born to die so that I could freely come to you and be forgiven of my sins. I want to be revived. I want to be healed. I want to behold your glory forever. Jesus, show me your glory. Maybe you haven't had the Lord touch you. Maybe it's been a long time since you felt his touch. I don't know about you, but I'm not satisfied with an empty bed. I want my love. I'm going to go out. I'm asking where he is. I'm searching for him under every rock, down every alley, in every street. 
I'm going out into the ocean. I don't care if there's a storm, I'm going to walk on water. If you've never received Jesus, don't leave here without him. Tomorrow is promised to no one. The road less traveled is hard. It's going to be the most difficult decision of your life to lay everything down to follow Jesus. This isn't a popular salvation message to say that you must consume Jesus' flesh. You have to drench yourself in his blood. If you or I are not willing to lay down everything I own, my family, my food, my home, my stuff, my money, my time, my full attention, my life for him, I am not worthy of him. It isn't a matter of giving him 99.5%. It's all or nothing. Let me just say this. All pleasure has a price. It's actually the same price across the board. It's everything you have and are. You either pay for it now or you pay for it later. In this life or the next. I either let go of everything now or I lose everything later. If you and I are ready for that kind of sacrifice now, we are ready to enter heaven now. Let's go together. I'm sure you don't want to go alone. If you've never given your heart to Jesus, I want to give that opportunity now. Just repeat after me. Jesus, I believe you are the Son of God. I believe that you have came and you died and rose again for my salvation. Jesus, forgive me of my sins. Fill me with your Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, I want to be your friend. I want you to guide me. I want you to lead me from my filthy desires. I want you to lead me to all truth. If you said that prayer, I want you to open up your heart now and be filled with the Spirit. There is an ongoing thing. The Spirit allows you to make the first commitment by coming inside you. But we need to go on being filled with the Spirit, as it says in Ephesians 5.18. We need to be constantly poured into. So I'm going to ask the Spirit to fill you now. He's calling you and I to greater depths. He wants to bury us under the deepest ocean of His love. He wants to bury that old nature. This is called the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Let's experience something awesome. Holy Spirit. I don't want to miss anything you have to say. I've said all that I could, Holy Spirit. I ask that you pour out your spirit now. Just, just come. Make yourself at home. I want to ask for forgiveness, Lord, if I've done anything to grieve you. And for those things that I know that have grieved you, Holy Spirit, I'm sorry. I ask that you would come and that you would fill this house. You'd pour out your rain. It'd be overflowing. That the heaviness of your spirit would come. Sometimes, Lord Jesus, the, the Bible mentions the kavod, the heaviness of God. Lord, we ask that you would bring your heaviness upon our hearts. That you would bury us in that. That as you bury us, Lord, our flesh would be dead, put to rest. And we would come to you, Lord God, with a new fever, new fervor for you, Lord. You are the most precious gift we could ever receive this Christmas, Lord. 
Lord, we come bringing the gold, Lord Jesus. We come bringing the frankincense and the myrrh. May it be a, a sweet smelling aroma to you, Father. We want to wash your feet, Lord Jesus. Lord, what a precious gift you are. Jesus was wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. The God of all creation made himself a vulnerable human baby. He wasn't born in a palace or a temple. He was born in a filthy manger for you and for I. He didn't arrange everything for himself so that he would be given the best. He gave himself the least so that he could give us everything. If he was willing to lay down his life for you, how much more does he want to give you everything? Lord, we thank you, Jesus, for for coming into our hearts, Lord God, for filling us with your Holy Spirit, Lord. And Lord, we ask that as you move, as you touch us, Lord, you'd pour out a spirit of joy, of mercy, of everlasting peace. And Lord God, you would just allow us, Lord God, to enter into new levels of joy. Joy to the world, Lord. Thank you, Father. We praise your name, Jesus. Joy to the world. The Lord is come. Let earth receive her king. There's just a sweet presence right now. Um, I just want thank you, Lord, for your rest. Um, if you like, uh, I'm 
kind of like, would like uh, just the musicians, if we could sing Joy to the World. Um, I love this time of year. I love... I love every opportunity to sing Christmas music, even when it's not Christmas, so, <laughs> or even near Christmas. <laughs> mm -hmm. It just puts so much joy in my heart. God bless you, brothers and sisters. I just want to say that um, I, this morning I woke up so frustrated. And I don't know, just angry at, uh, but as I walked in here, I walked in a little late, forgive me, but just the words that, that were in that song spoke to me, and I have so much to thank God and be joyful for, as I was a little bit angry. My grandson has been really sick, but I've been bringing Sarah's boys, and that's a miracle in itself because she doesn't want to come to church. But now that she got this job, well, she has no choice but to leave them with me. And, and I say it's a blessing that I can bring them with me because what he, showed, what he learned in Sunday school the previous Sunday, this week when Aiden was sick, Malachi, went with me to go see him and on our drive to Sawarita, he was all he was saying is, Jesus is alive, no, no. he's alive, and he's going to send the angels. And he was so joyful and singing the word, crying or worried. And Aiden says to my Sally when she was crying, that he, she says, Mama, don't worry. I okay, Mama, and I know they learn all of this from God's word when we share it with them, when we live it. So there is a lot to be joyful for. And my grandson, Aiden, he's had a difficult time going to the bathroom, and they were really worried that he was going to have to be hospitalized because it was a long time since he had to go to the bathroom. To have a ball movement. And after Malachi we arrived at my daughter's house, he went in before me. And she told me, Malachi just prayed for Aiden. And yesterday, when he was at the house, he went twice to the bathroom. I just have to thank God. And yes, what Jonathan is sharing with us, we do. We need to be joyful for all that the Lord does, even through our grandchildren. God bless you all. Joy to the world. To the world, the Lord is come. Let earth receive her King. Let every heart prepare Him room. And heaven and nature sing. And heaven and nature sing. And heaven and heaven and nature sing. He rules the world with truth and grace. And makes the nations prove. The glories of His righteousness And wonders of His love And wonders of His love And wonders and wonders of His love The 
Praise the world, the Lord is come. Let earth receive her King. Let every heart prepare Him room. And heaven and nature sing. And heaven and nature sing. And heaven and heaven and nature sing. Joy to the world, Lord. Thank you so much, Lord Jesus. You're so awesome, God. That we could come here, Lord Jesus, and just be touched by you. That we could receive your spirit, Lord. It's such a precious gift, Lord Jesus. We pray that you would help us, Lord God, in everything we do. Lord, let my mind be stayed on you. Let my mind never desire the things of this world, but let me stay my mind on you. Let me be careful what I put into my mind, Lord Jesus. Let me be careful, Lord Jesus, what I let my eyes see. Thank you, Father. We give you joy, Lord. We give you praise. We thank you, Lord, for everything you do. And we ask, Lord, that you would begin to touch people. If anyone needs a healing touch, the clinic is open. We're here to pray for you. We're here to see God do amazing things because we love Jesus. And Jesus is here to touch you. If you've seen Jesus, you've seen the Father. When you experience Jesus, you experience his beauty. If you abide in him, he will cause the presence of the Holy Spirit to pass before your eyes. We just want to abide in your presence now, Jesus. We just thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. My heart is so full right now. I don't even know where to begin. I've been around for a good many years, probably 30 at least. What you heard this morning was the Lord not only blessing you, us, but this young man right here. Gil and Mary Lou will have no problem leaving this church to this young man. That's not the only thing. Gil knows because I've told him before that I look around, I remember when every seat was full and I worry and I cry and I ask the Lord and he said, be encouraged. Don't worry about the seats that are empty because they will be filled again. And I told Gil this morning, he's telling me soon, soon, soon. And because of what Jonathan told us this morning, the Spirit washed him and us and is getting us ready, all of us that are here, to help those that are going to become running, running to these seats to hear the word. Gil and Mary Lou have never, never, never wandered from that cause in their life to, to praise the Lord, to worship the Lord, and to give his word to us. And now... Their two children, both of them, are blessed by the Lord so bountifully that this church will continue. But we, according to God, are going to be one of the last time churches. That's what he's been telling me for months now. When I weep over these seats, he says, no, no, no. Be encouraged, be encouraged, all of you, that this place will be filled and it's going to be very soon, according to the way Jonathan was preaching this morning. He's encouraging you to stand strong and firm, just as all of Jonathan's family and himself and, and um, everybody, all the Garcias have been standing strong. So we just thank you, Lord, this morning for that. And I just want to thank you, Lord, from the bottom of my heart for blessing my life the way you have with this church, with this family, with these people that are my family, 
Father, I give you praise and glory this morning. And we're waiting, we're waiting for your soon coming, just as Jonathan said. And we are preparing our hearts today for that soon coming. Thank you, Father. Thank you from the bottom of my heart. Thank you. Thank you. We give you praise. We give you praise. We give you praise. You know, uh, I want to share a couple of things. Number one, uh, when Laura called, called us and said to pray for uh, her grandson, Mary Lou and I immediately agreed in prayer. And Jacob prayed also. Uh, the Lord would touch him. We're so blessed that, that he didn't have to have surgery and didn't need to be hospitalized. But as Jonathan was speaking, I, I, all through the, all this week I've been thinking about when I was young and when Jesus came into my life and I experienced a real revival in, in the Jesus movement. And I know some of you were born again at that time, but the Lord told me, he says, have all the young people come up, all, all the young children, all the young people, we want you guys to come up to the front. We're going to pray for you. Uh, Jonathan's going to pray for you guys. And then when, when all the young people come up, we're going to have all the rest of the us older folks are going to pray for them. What's that, Mary Lou? They're in the back? Okay, well, <clears throat> maybe, uh, maybe somebody can go bring them. Dave, will you go tell them that we want all the young people? To, we, want, we want to bless the young people, amen? I really believe this is a, an important service. I don't know why. Uh, I know the Lord told me, have Jonathan share. And, uh, and we just want all the young people to come. And, and then after the young people are up here, the young couples too. You know, the, the uh, should I say 40 and below? Because that's real young. <laughs> 40 and below. We want you guys to come up. And then the rest of us are going to pray for them, okay? So teenagers children young people we want you guys to come up young families you, you know young couples you know come on up first just stand right here in front We're, we want to pray for you guys we want to bless you and uh we just believe that this is of the lord we want all the young the young ones to come you know like i said 40 and below if you're in your 30s you're not too old if you're in your 40s you're not too old just come up to the front right now all the young people if you have little ones, just bring them with you, okay? Or leave them with the grandparents, whatever you want to do. But come up front. I don't bite. <clears throat> if I need a breath, man, just somebody give me one. So. <laughs> All the young people come up, okay? The kids are going to come from the back. Come on, you guys. The, you guys back there, come on. And all the, all the younger ones, Okay? And uh, I'm gonna have I'm gonna have Jonathan uh, uh, pray for them, and I want the rest of you to, to pray behind. Here they come. All right, Amen. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. <laughs> okay, uh, go ahead and make your way over here, all the young people. I'll just keep uh, talking, I guess, until they come. <laughs> Is that everyone? Still more, praise God. <laughs> all right. Okay, so all of our youth ministry is coming up here now. Yeah, all the children too come up here. Yeah, yeah, youth and children. That's the same. So, <laughs> okay. Really, we're all children. We're all children of God, right? I think we just get older and pretend that we're not kids anymore. Just. <laughs> And then some people get dementia, and then they're kids again. So, <laughs> but all right, okay. We're just gonna pray for all the young people. We want to bless you. We want to give you guys just a a mantle of of the Holy Spirit just upon your lives. We want to claim you for the kingdom. We will just want you to abide in his presence right now and just allow him to come into your heart. If you've never committed yourself to Jesus, you can do that now. You just say, Jesus, come into my heart. I believe that you died on the cross for me. And I believe you did that for me. And I repent of my sins. I want to come to you. So right now, I'm just going to pray a blessing over all of you. Lord, 
We know, Lord God, that you have come to bless these children today, Lord God, these young people today, Lord God, these young adults today, Lord God, you have come to pour out your spirit upon them, Lord Jesus. You will give them a fresh anointing, Father. You will pour out your spirit, Lord God. You will give them something new, Lord God, something straight from the kingdom of heaven, Lord God, new and glorious power from your Holy Spirit, Lord Jesus. We just pray over them now, Lord God. We bless them with the Holy Spirit. And we speak into their future, Lord God. We know that they have a bright and glorious future with you, Lord God. We know, Lord God, that you are uh, seeking them now, Lord Jesus. That you have chosen these young people, Lord God, to serve you. You've chosen them, Lord Jesus, to be the change and the difference in our city, Lord God, in our nation, in our world, Lord. They have come here today, Lord God. Maybe they didn't even realize it. Maybe they were dragged here by their parents, Lord Jesus, or their grandparents, Lord, but they are here now, Lord Jesus, to receive your Holy Spirit, to receive the touch from God, to receive everything you have for them right now. We just welcome your Holy Spirit. We welcome your presence, Lord. We welcome your Holy Spirit to just touch every single life here right now, Lord God. And we ask, Lord God, that they would leave here, Lord God, knowing that the Spirit has touched them today, Lord Jesus, knowing that there is a new mantle, a fresh anointing on their lives. And Lord God, we bless them. Lord, we say that, Lord God, we that they will be blessed in their going and their coming out, Lord Jesus. They're going, going in and coming out, Lord Jesus, that they will be blessed, Lord God, in everything that they do. They can expect to be the first. They can expect to be the head and not the tail, Lord God. They have the blessings of Abraham. They have the blessings of Isaac and Jacob, Lord Jesus. They have the blessings of Manasseh. And, Lord Jesus, they have the blessings of Esther. They have the blessings of of all the men and women of the Bible, Lord Jesus. The shalom of God be poured out on them now, Lord Jesus. And right now, Lord God, we say that they will be blessed in everything that they do, that they can expect to be the best. They can expect to be the head and not the tail in everything they do. That every endeavor that they put their hand to, they will be blessed. They will be anointed for your glory, for your position that you have for them, Lord. Just raise them up now, Lord Jesus, to be mighty men and women of God, to be mighty warriors for your cause. In the name of Jesus, we bless them now. Thank you, Father. Pour out your spirit, Lord. Anoint them for a work, Lord God, that they don't understand, that they're ready to receive. It's okay to close your eyes to just... uh, Welcome the Holy Spirit into your heart. It's okay to close your eyes to just focus on Him. You don't have to focus on the things of this world. You can focus on Jesus. The Spirit of the Lord is here. Just grab a hold of Him. Your mind may not be able to understand it, but your spirit does. Just grab a hold of Him. Don't focus on earthly things, focus on heaven. As it is in heaven, Lord, may it be so on earth. In the name of Jesus, let your spirit come. Fill them up, Lord. Fill them with joy, Lord Jesus, unspeakable joy. Let the joy of the Lord be their strength, Lord Jesus. Oh, Lord, just pour out your joy on them, Lord. Pour out your joy. Let them fill your spirit, Lord, now. Let them focus their minds on you, Lord. Let them receive what you have for them, Lord. Just focus on the Lord. He wants to bless you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, we know that you're alive. We know, Lord God, that you sent your son to die for us so that we might live. And he rose again as proof that he rose, as proof that he died for us. He rose again as proof that he was the father, that he was the son of God, that he was everything we need. We thank you, God, what you're doing now. Let's touch everyone now. May your spirit fill them, Lord God. Rest a mantle on their shoulders, Lord. In 
name of Jesus, let them experience your kavod, Lord Jesus, your heaviness, Lord, the weight of the glory of God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Lord, you want to restore to these young people, Lord God. Even what they've lost at these young ages, Lord, you want to restore to them. You want to give them joy, Lord God. You want to give them the joy of their salvation. You want to restore them, Lord God, to greater relationship, affection for you, Lord Jesus. You want to give them a passion and a heart after you, Lord God. You want to replace, Lord God, anything in their lives that's been stolen, Lord Jesus. You want to give them life. You want to give them future, Lord God. You want to give them health. You want to give them so much, Lord Jesus. Let them just run with what you have, Lord God. They're going to run and not grow weary, Lord Jesus. They're going to run and they're going to chase after you, Lord God. They're going to find you, Lord Jesus, when they chase after you with their whole hearts, Lord. They're going to run and they're going to run into your presence, Lord. And they're going to bring others with them, Lord Jesus as mighty men and women of the gospel, Lord, they're going to be running with you, Jesus. Running that they might win the race, not that they might come in last place, but they might come in first. Thank you, Jesus. We want to bless these young people. Let them strengthen their legs, Lord Jesus, so that they can run and not grow weary. In the name of Jesus, give them rest, Lord. Give them peace. Give them the joy of your salvation, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hmm. Bless you guys. Amen. Thanks for coming up. This was a commission service for all our young people. Amen. All these young people, every one of them. Amen. God bless you guys. See you Wednesday. Amen. <laughs>